Hello and welcome to Robin Midgley Mentoring Monday's YouTube channel. If you recall, we have presented a case with Contessa Stewart, and this is the final series with this case where we demonstrate to you how this 34-year-old lady who slipped and fell on concrete and lacerated the tendons and nerves in her hand consented to the application of the SIMS technique uh, whereby we are able to correct a claw deformity as well as correct a normal pattern of motion. In this particular case, the patient did not have a stiff hand. She just had a very abnormal movement pattern. So let's remind ourselves of this patient's movement pattern. She was dominating with the MCP joints into flexion. The little finger was hardly engaging. And although there was full passive range of motion of the middle and ring fingers, she was unable to achieve digital flexion with those. This is partly due to the fact that there were tendon adhesions, but also predominantly due to the fact that she had an abnormal pattern of motion. And this is evident in the fact that we were able to correct this after two and a half weeks in a SIMS cast. The first thing that we did was we applied an intrinsic minus cast, and then we added an additional component, which was removable, made out of thermoplastic. This component blocked the DIP joints, and the patient was instructed to initiate flexion just with the DIP joints for 70% of the day, and then remove that component to initiate flexion with the PIP joints for 30% of the day. This was done repeatedly. So because we positioned the MCP joints in 20 degrees of flexion, we corrected the claw deformity and Christy was able to actively fully extend the PIP and DIP joints. This was effective over time, and it also simultaneously reduced the adhesions in the flexor tendons. What is very important um, are the instructions that you provide the patient with on how to exercise the hand within the cast. Opening and closing. So extend it all the way up and then curl it right back down to the edge of your cast. See if you can get the middle and the ring to touch. And when you do, since it's bivalved right now, there's some give. Try to keep your finger at the back of this. Okay. So that you're pulling more like this. This oh, type of okay. movement. So you're trying to touch that little top edge of the cast. Okay. Yes. You're almost touching when you do that. Once I put a strap on there, maybe some give there. Good job. So although she was able to correct the movement pattern and achieve the desired pattern and range within the cast, she really struggled to maintain that outside of the cast. And she also just needed a little bit more assistance in improving full composite fist. So what we did at this stage was we changed the cast design and applied an intrinsic plus cast. So this cast design was very effective in educating the brain and how to move into the second phase of movement. And we were able to achieve a full fist with improved digital flexion. However, what we did notice was that the finger began to angulate into flexion at end range. So we applied an intrinsic minus cast and used the kinesio tape to facilitate joint motion and correct the malalignment of the digit. At this stage, we were able to give her a hand-based cast and we reinforced the cast exercises as this was very important. And the reason the cast combined with the tape was successful is because the joint still needed to be constrained to facilitate the correct pattern of motion. And then we use different kinesio tape joint alignment techniques and use specific exercises as well as a foam block to help retrain the motion and restore digital flexion with normal joint alignment. 
I wonder if this may help train your finger because your finger is getting so much closer to the palm when you have it on, on that. I mean, do you see how close that is every uh -huh. single time? Full extension and try to bend it all the way down and then straighten it back out again. I'm gonna get it from the side. And same thing again. Small finger didn't look as bad that time. But it might be not what you want either. <coughs> okay, then I'm gonna get it from the side. Okay, now this time, make it go to your palm. All the way down, make it touch, make it touch. And then when you come back up, this time do your best at keeping the tip of that thing bent as you curl it in towards the palm. And back up again, and down. Can you get them all the way down to your palm? Yep, keep going. I feel like you're holding the tip a bit more bent. Like right now, your tip is still bent. It's not doing its straight out thing. Okay, go for the palm this time. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Look, it's almost touching. Let's chat to Contessa and find out a little bit more about how she found mentoring helped her treat this patient successfully. Allow me to introduce you all to Cantessa if you have not yet met her. Cantessa, thank you so much for letting us share this case and your journey with this case uh, for Mentoring Mondays. Sure, it's been very interesting to say the least. I've learned a lot. Now, I think this was the patient that encouraged you to sign up for the Sims course, wasn't it? Yes, I had watched your Flexor Tendon webinar with uh, Jen Sager and Dr. Lalonde and Dr. Roulette and immediately thought of this patient, even though her tendon repair was very far post-op, she was very far post-op, but I thought this might be something that would kind of help finish getting her back to work and back to doing all the things that she wanted to be able to do again with her hand. How were you feeling when you were going through those 17 weeks? What, con what was uh, concerning you? Well, I don't, um, I'm pretty persistent. So I was never, you know, like, oh man, this is really bad. Um, I just kept trying more and more things. We did a lot of things with kinesio taping, cupping, scraping, you know, just thinking outside the box, uh, trying to get movement out of those um, three fingers that just were not moving well at all. Uh, the patient was very frustrated though and depressed at the point where you know it was difficult for her to write, she couldn't use her hand at work to type, and those are vital things in her job. So I just kept trying to think, what else can I do? And then took that webinar, and then I was like, oh my gosh, this might be the missing link. And her fiance or husband is an occupational therapist, isn't he? Yes, yes, he is. So no pressure there. <laughs> right. He actually is doing wheelchair fittings now, but I had given them all the information to try to look up on the Sims technique uh, so that he could read about it, learn about it if he was interested, and then maybe help kind of so that she had some information to look at too. So it was nice that you have those um, case study presentations online because some of my patients have actually wanted to see how other patients do with it. And at the point in time that I was starting this with Christy, I had no history other than the resources that you had available. So it was good for them to see other patients who had gone through the program, what the cast looked like, what the exercises looked like, kind of time frames, And so that was a good resource to have as well to help with patients and getting them on board. Absolutely. And, and one can go to the website, robinmidgley.com, and you can get patient testimonials, therapist testimonials. And then of course, um, on the social media pages, there's lots of examples. So I think that is beneficial. However, I think you're collecting your own um, resources now. And yeah, now, now I have a ton. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have I a saved them all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just talk about um, signing up for the course. How did you find the whole experience? From I, yeah, I mean, I felt like it was a very personal approach uh, in the past. You know, things have definitely evolved over the years as far as continuing education goes. 
Um, there's a lot more online learning versus in-person learning. And I found that the you being able to talk to me, with, I think within a day of me reaching out to you and then signing up and doing a, a Zoom meeting where you explained how the classes would work, how the online module worked, all the different things I would have access to once I signed up for the course. It was very easy to, to follow once I got signed up. Oh, that's great. I, I do feel that that often is missing with a course. You know, it's one thing listening to the lectures and getting the knowledge, but it's another thing actually applying a complicated technique like Sims. Oh, exactly. And I think too, uh, you know, when you go to a course, the course is over. And then what do you do? You know, you have all these questions. So it's been very nice to have the mentoring page, the, you know, the private social um, networking page where we can present cases and get feedback from other people who have been using this technique for quite some time. So all of that together has definitely provided a good learning environment. It's not like the course is done and then I have to figure out how to keep using this technique. I have resources that can help me continue to grow, which is, I think, very important to making this successful, me being successful with this technique. Absolutely. I've, I found in the first few months of, after I launched the course, I didn't provide that service. I hadn't thought about providing it. And therapists were coming to me months later saying, oh, but you know, I wasn't that successful. And then I looked at it and thought, oh, but I should have intervened and I should have provided you with some advice or should have been there. And that's when I kind of came up with the idea of joining therapists in, in their clinic to mentor them. How did Christy feel about that when you first suggested it to her that I'll join the session? Oh, she was on board with uh, trying anything. Like I said, she was frustrated and, you know, at some some version of depression, I think, from not being able to use her dominant hand. So she knew that I had tried to get through the course modules as quickly as I could so that I could get to the point where we could actually use this technique on her. And she was on board with it. And I explained to her that you would be zooming in since you live like on a different continent and uh, that I needed your help because this was something I hadn't done before. And I wanted to make sure that if I was doing it, I was doing it correctly. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I haven't found a patient who hasn't enjoyed me being there. And I oh, no, they all think you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. It's so enjoyable. And then this was a difficult case. So I think had you tried to apply this technique on your own, you would have come into some stumbling blocks. What do you think those stumbling blocks would have been? I think the stumbling blocks, especially and I still am, am fine tuning this. I mean, I am by no means uh, great at this is the time frame on the casts, knowing when to buy valve them. And I think I'm getting better at learning when you need to switch to the cast, but really I think the most, um, I think she just used three casts over the whole time. Like she didn't have to have, this is not a, a real expensive thing. And if you look at the way that I was, doing things before, you know, we had a forearm based dorsal block and then we made her a P1 block, you know? So I don't think that the, the casts are uh, very expensive. I mean, compared to some of the things of 17 sessions and having trouble getting the movement out of them. But no, I think that the, the mentoring helped me a lot with the casting for sure. I needed that. And I don't know that I would have known when to buy valve it, how long to leave it on, when to progress to the next one. So the mentoring definitely helped me understand or start to put together like an algorithm of how the thought process goes along with watching their movements and what's next. Absolutely. And eventually it will become part of you. You won't be able to separate Chris, your Contessa from Sims. You'll be one in the same, which is so lovely. Um, and, and then of course we moved on to well, going back to using those traditional techniques that you were trying in the beginning, which was kinesio tape, and then your brilliant idea of using that blue foam piece around the joint. Like, I cannot take credit for that. That was totally my coworker. We were all kind of trying to figure out um, after the Sims Club meeting where I had to present my cases, uh, the fellow students in the, or not students, but therapists had given me some other ideas to try. Um, when you watch the videos, you can see that the ring finger is still struggling and the small finger also much improved, but still not quite into that composite fist. And 
we were playing around with using like the silicone digit sleeves and doubling those up. And then uh, one of my coworkers says, why don't you try this foam? It's the foam that you would use to build up silverware or toothbrush handles or whatever. And so we slid it and put it on there and it actually worked pretty well. <laughs> and it was comfortable too, yeah. It did. And I think what was really good was how we aligned that joint. And as soon as we got that joint correction, it started to imprint better in the somatosensory cortex to improve a movement pattern. And yeah, you, were and it, quite, you were quite surprised by her very abnormal pattern, weren't you? Yes, I don't think I've seen a movement pattern like that ever. 23 years. Yeah. It's unique for sure. Absolutely. And, and tell me, how have your surgeons responded to you using the SIMS technique? Uh, our surgeons are on board with whatever helps their patients. So, you know, as long as we get our patients, their patients better and their outcomes are back to work using their hand, they're on board with whatever helps their patients. Have you had to spend time explaining why you're immobilizing to mobilize? You know, not as much as I thought I would have to. Not really. No. Um, and I, I did a, a presentation showing them uh, some of the outcomes from their patients uh, once I was able to finally obtain some. It takes a few, you know, you don't have outcomes in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, those outcomes, I think, kind of proved to them, you know, how much it, it can be a benefit to their patients, but not a lot of time spent convincing them. Like I said, they're very on board with things that help their patients. And they trust you. And that's so important. Um, well, I think we have a good working relationship. So that, that makes it a, an easy thing to do. We work well together. Absolutely. I think what's so exciting about this case was that you achieved rapid results. I mean, two weeks of Sims, but you only saw the patient once or twice versus 17 weeks. And how often were you seeing her then? Uh, I would say probably one to two times a week from think December through March and then we started Sims in the middle of March and I just saw her last week and I think we've had seven sessions in total compared to 17 yeah so those results came quick once we once I knew what to do and this technique she responded well to it yes and we definitely owe this technique to Judy Colditz and you know thank her oh, for, yeah. for um really not only developing it, but also scientifically proving it over a long period of time. And, and I think that cases like this really do add to the literature. So hopefully I can convince you to write up your case reports so that we can- I'll need help with that. That's a, that's a book I haven't opened yet. Well, the exciting news is, and I can announce this, is that um, Aviva Wolf and I are going to be starting our writing club hopefully before the end of the year, hopefully in October. Oh, great. So that will be wonderful. So we can really just work with her to get our cases published. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, so exciting. So Contessa, is there anything else you want to share about your experience um, with the patient or the technique? Mm, I think that um, based on my experience, this was something that you know, when I was studying to be a hand therapist and reading all of the books and the literature, and I even did a program at Drexel University to try to help gain more experience and more knowledge before I sat for the exam, I just did not understand this technique. And reading about it, or like I said earlier, just attending a single course, that isn't going to teach, you know, as well as I do working in our clinics, experience is what Mm. helps you become a better therapist so you can learn something but if you don't understand it or how to use it or you don't have the experience behind when to do it when not to do it that's something that I think this course helped me with because it's given me the ability to keep learning as I go even though my course is complete I'm not done I have access to people that can keep helping me and that's I think going to make it so that I can be better at this technique Absolutely. And I think that was really the, the vision I had in mind was to grow a community and grow experts within the community so that we can all help each other. And I've even found that the community is now starting to give everybody ideas and 
in a great way take over from me because you gain that experience. And on the other hand, I can say that I've been doing this for 25 years and I feel I'm still having to think about these cases carefully, check my thought process, sometimes second guess myself. It isn't always that straightforward. It is a complicated technique to apply in just in terms of clinical reasoning, not in terms of actually physically applying a cast. Anybody can learn to do that. Yeah, but exactly. It's the nuances. It's the, the small shift in a joint position. Like, for example, in this case with the claw deformity, just by positioning those MCP joints in 20 degrees of flexion, we completely changed the claw deformity and corrected that long term yeah she still has full extension there's no claw deformity her sems weinstein test i think she is no longer red lined on those two fingers but she still has loss of diminished protective sensation so her ability to feel is not normal so you know that the the muscles aren't working that well yet either um, but she is making gains with her SEM. So I think that like the SEMS Weinstein, not the SEMS technique, but I think that the fact that the claw deformity is still resolved, even though we know those intrinsic muscles aren't working correctly yet is pretty amazing. It has been a fantastic incidental finding for me. And, and with each case that we, we use this technique or apply this technique to, I'm finding more uses. This is not just a technique for the stiff hand. Oh, exactly. And I know in your video earlier, you mentioned that her fingers were stiff. She has, she had full passive motion in those fingers the entire time. So there was no joint stiffness that I was treating on her. It was just control and limited tendon gliding, I think, like yeah. control of the hand and the limited tendon excursion because of scarring. Absolutely. So it definitely worked. Yeah. It worked. And I look forward to seeing what you can do with this technique in future because you have a very busy you've got a busy caseload and you have a lot of complicated patients in your caseload yes yes and it does i mean it's not as if every patient that walks in the door needs this technique but when you find the ones that are not getting better it's like oh here we're just going to put this and your hand's going to get better and they make gains so quick like why didn't i do this sooner but you know you want to try to give them every op opportunity to improve but in anything else we do that's the reason why we measure, why we take our objectives data and document it and we look at it. And then when we see the plateau or no change, that's when I'm like, all right, we've done all the traditional things. You're no longer making gains. This is what I think we need to try next. And I have only really had one patient who um, will not go back in a cast. And I've shown her the data that she made gains when she was in it. Out of it, she's losing motion. I can't convince her and I, I'm not going to convince everybody. And that's okay. But at least she has she was given the option and it was her choice. Can I convince you to try it sooner on patients and not wait until traditional therapies on. failed? I'm working on that. <laughs> it's only four months, maybe four months that I've been trying it. So yeah, I, I like I said, I have a lot to learn. The weaning phase, I think, is something when to change to a different type of cast. Uh, like all of those things, I think, take a lot of uh, knowledge that I'm trying to build I don't have it yet yes it's knowledge and it's confidence yeah yeah I have to be able to sell it to my patient and if I'm unsure myself that's hard to sell it to them if I'm still trying to figure it out but that's where I'm using the Facebook page or our mentoring sessions to try to help with that well I'm so proud of you and I think that you have really grasped this technique and you, you're applying it very, very well. And I think you'll only go from strength to strength. So thank you sh so much for sharing your thoughts with us. And well, thank you for developing a way to teach us Judy's technique, because that's helped me so much. I wish I would have understood it better years ago when I was like, I think there's something to this, but I yeah. couldn't figure it out. So this at least made it click for me. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much, Contessa. Thank you.